Today on Two Crazy Kivas, we're going to do a ground beef meal prep. And we're going to go to Costco right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketas. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketas, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to do a ground beef meal prep because ground beef is definitely a staple in our house. And it's so versatile yep. and everybody likes it. Yeah. So recently we did uh, our challenge on, you know, eating for less than $5 a day. And I bought that big giant 10 pound log of ground beef. So people were like, well, what can I do with it other than just like, grunt, you know, browning up ground beef? So that's what we're going to do today. Lots of stuff you can make. So we're going to run to Costco because Costco has some um, uh, 88% uh, lean ground beef on sale for like $2.69 a pound. Wow. So we're going to go get a big giant vat of ground beef, a couple of other things, and then we're going to come home and we're going to show you guys what we're going to do with roughly eight pounds of ground beef. It's amazing. Okay, so we're here at Costco. We're gonna return this disgusting keto snack mix. The green bean one. And we're gonna get some stuff so that we can do meal prep this way. This way, nobody's eating any garbage in the house. So we can start Christmas shopping for Tabitha. At Costco, they have these four toys. They're Kongs, and they're only $14. That's actually a really good deal for Kongs. Except for she's not getting them at Christmas. She's getting them now. So we haven't even tried the ones we got from BJ's yet. They're actually like in the refrigerator to be tried, but these are on sale for $8 for 18. So we've got to give this a try. Just a once in a blue moon treat. I'm a cheese snob. I've got to try this. This is Bel Giorcio and this is Burrata. This is fresh mozzarella cheese that has been filled with shreds of mozzarella cheese that have been soaked in cream. Oh my goodness. We are definitely, definitely getting this. And uh, the ingredients in this are um, milk and cream, vinegar, enzymes, and salt. 70 calories per serving, 6 grams of fat, 3 grams of protein, one total carbohydrate. We can't say it, but we're going to eat it. That's right. Okay, we're going to make our blue cheese dressing in a separate recipe video, but they don't have any regular containers of blue cheese here at Costco, but they do have this gorgonzola. And a lot of people don't know that gorgonzola is actually just an Italian blue cheese. This makes great blue cheese dressing, and it's a really good price. It's $4.69 a pound, so this entire block is $8. Usually we go to Publix in those little tiny containers of crumbled blue cheese. They're five or six dollars. So this will make a lot of dressing for us. We're back from Costco. Just like a wall of meat. <laughs> so we went to Costco. You guys saw that. We got a couple things, but the main thing that we needed to get was some ground beef. Um, we're not going to use grass fed this week. Number one, because we're trying to show how you can do this cost effectively. Yes. And also... Nobody has any grass-fed ground beef on sale in our area. We usually like to buy it when it's on sale for like three ninety-nine a pound. Uh, they didn't have that, so we're going with this. This is two ninety-nine a pound. It's eighty-eight percent lean, and again, we've talked about this before. When Add your you're own fats. Not buying grass-fed. Buy the higher uh, leanness. Mm -hmm. Is that a right word? Leanness. No, probably not. Probably not. not, but we're going to go with it. So buy the leaner meat. That's okay. better, right? There you go. That's it. And add your own fat. So this was $2.99 a pound. This whole thing was $19. It's two, uh, six and a half pounds. So since... It's a respectable amount. But we're going to do four different recipes because the whole point of this is everybody is leading very busy lives in this house right now. Yes. Caleb is going to school and he's working. Anthony is helping us with our landscaping business and he's working and he's like doing his social things and he's volunteering at church. You're working four jobs. Yeah, I'm working four jobs. And I'm tired of like coming home going like everybody like, what? 
is there to eat? Can you please cook for me? Because not only does that heighten your chances for getting off of plan yep. as far as calories go, but it will hit your wallet because if you're not deciding what to eat until you're hungry or it's mealtime, you're going to just buy whatever's available. It's also a great way to anger Joe when Joe's working four jobs and then a child comes up to you and go, are you going to cook for me? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, six and a half pounds isn't quite enough for us. So we're going to add in. I have this that I defrosted. We were going to eat this for lunch. Mm -hmm. We're just going to add this in. This is one pound of grass fed. We'll just mix it all together. So now we've got, what, seven and a half? Seven and a half pounds, which will be perfect. So here's what we're going to make. We're going to make a cheeseburger casserole. Yes. All the recipes for this are linked down in the description. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to go through step-by-step -step making it. We'll just kind of show you guys some portions of it. Because we do have videos for these. Uh, some of them. Yeah. Cheeseburger casserole. We're going to make a taco pie yes. modified a little bit from my recipe. We're going to use double, ma double meat, double eggs, uh, but the same amount of heavy whipping cream. All right. Okay. Then we're going to also make some hamburgers and we're gonna make a meatloaf. This is going to be a delicious week. First thing that we need to do is actually take this ground beef and divide it up into some portions. What, what is it, like two pounds per we're gonna go, dish? We're gonna go two pounds. I figure we're gonna do a two pound meatloaf, two pounds of meat for the taco pie, okay. two pounds of meat for the cheeseburger casserole, and then everything that's left, we'll just make up some hamburgers Stick them in a little container, and then it's a great grab-and-go thing. Yes. Okay. There we go. Two pounds. Wow. Next plate. And one pound, 15 ounces. Almost there. There you go. So close. Okay. So we got... Getting close. There you go. All right. And then this is what's left. So we have a pound over there. And change. A pound and change was just kind of, instead of dirtying another plate, zero. <laughs> so we have a pound and eight ounces. Yeah. So a pound and a half is what's left. That's perfect. That'll make about four or five nice burgers. Nice. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, what are we going to start with? Let's just... Start what with takes our, the longest? Well, let's start with our meatloaf. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to, and because we can, we need some onions. So let's go take a bunch of onions. We'll brown them all up. We'll saute them up. And then we can divide it up between the cheeseburger casserole and our meatloaf. Okay, first up is to do the onions, which we're going to use for the meatloaf and for the cheeseburger casserole. And I had to go get onions anyway. So we were going to make the cheeseburger casserole with no bacon because I didn't have any bacon. Uh, but I did find this on sale, so it's already over on the oven. We've cut it up, and we're just, like, browning it up for little pieces. Mm -hmm. But this was the Maverick Ranch Hickory Smoked Uncured No Sugar Bacon. So uh, this was actually on sale for $4.99. It's 8 ounces. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. Right it's out a little package. expensive for me for bacon. We're used to going to like either Sprouts or Whole Foods or to Lucky's and getting the no sugar bacon. And usually that's about $8 a pound. Yeah. So you figure this was $5 for a half a pound, but it's what they had. It's what they have. And you don't have to have the bacon in the cheeseburger casserole, but like you want it. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to take a couple tablespoons of butter. This isn't an exact recipe. The recipes, if you want exact recipes, are linked down below. I'm just kind of shooting from the hip with today. So we got a couple tablespoons of butter in our pan. We're just using a little tiny pan. And we're going to soften up some onions. Now these onions, this is enough onions for both recipes. So I have like one and a half small yellow onions all chopped up. It's amazing the difference of the amount of onions that we cook with now. We right. used to put like a Vidalia onion in every single thing we cooked. Right? I've also learned to, I pretty much stick to yellow onions. I don't buy sweet onions anymore because the sweet onions have like twice the carbs. Yeah. So one of the things we do like to do when we do ground beef and we make a bunch of different recipes all at one time is I try to find different things that use similar ingredients to make everything go faster. For example, we're doing the meatloaf and we're doing the cheeseburger casserole. They both need some onions that are cooked down. So I'll just cook all of the onion at one time 
and then I can just divide it up for the recipe. Then we have like the taco pie and the cheeseburger casserole. They all need ground beef. They both need ground beef and it's gotta be browned up ahead of time. So we're gonna brown up all four pounds at once, then just divide it for each recipe. And all of these recipes freeze really well. They, yeah, they all freeze really well. My, the biggest suggestion I make, if you're gonna do something, for example, like the taco pie, if you wanna freeze it, um, cook it like three quarters of the way through. Like let it set, but don't brown the cheese. And this way, when you take it out of the freezer, you can defrost it and like put it back into the oven to heat it up and that'll brown up the cheese. Okay, onions are done. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna put this to the side. We're gonna grab the other pan and start on the ground beef and I will check on the bacon. Okay, next up is brown the ground beef. And since we're doing it here on the hot plate, we're just gonna do two pounds at a time, but we're gonna do it all once before changing out pans. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and drop that in. Sizzle, sizzle. And we got our little ground beef tool. I'll leave a link for this thing. We got it on Amazon and this thing is awesome. It's crazy. The only thing is, is my cast iron pots like move around a lot on this thing. Mm -hmm. We need to get a um, induction? induction cooktop. I knew that was coming. Okay, so this ground beef is gonna be for our tacos. So we're gonna add our taco seasoning. I have about three tablespoons here. So we're just gonna go ahead and stir that around really well, and then we'll let it simmer for a little while. Then we can move on to the ground beef for the cheeseburger casserole. So I think this is all mixed up. Okay, so this is the ground beef for the taco seasoning. So what we're gonna do, the taco pie, we're gonna take one of these little aluminum pans, and we're just gonna go ahead and dump this right in here. Fat and all, I never ever drain the beef, the, the juices out unless I'm making my lasagna where Why you don't want to have all, you want to have all that flavor. We're going to level that out. We'll make the topping for it in a little while. We're going to go clean this and get the next batch going. Okay, this is for the cheeseburger casserole. We're gonna add to this while the ground beef is cooking, just a couple of teaspoons of minced garlic. Make sure we mix that all around and let it to cook in. You wanna get that little bit out of there? Don't wanna miss any garlic. The dog is standing, is like laying here, so I have to like step over her to get back to you. Every time I cook. Okay, so ground beef is pretty much done with the um, garlic in it. So we're gonna take these onions that we cooked before, we're gonna put half of them in here, and then the other half we're gonna go into our meatloaf. It smells so incredible in here. Then we're gonna add, we've got in here some salt, some pepper, and into that, we're going to add about three ounces of cream cheese. This was, it's supposed to be four slices of bacon, but I think there were like, it was eight ounces. It was like yeah. five slices. We're going to put about half of this bacon in here. And this is the secret. This is what's going to make this taste just like a cheeseburger casserole. I'm going to use some low carb uh, ketchup. Mm -hmm. This is the Alterna Sweets. This is the only one that we use now. We've tried so a bunch good. of other ones. The one that we got from Sprouts, Anthony loved. He does. It has a great taste. Let me show you that one. Uh, this no sugar added trumaine. We got it at Sprouts. Uh, the ingredients weren't bad. Um, I think it had some like apple juice or something in it. Um, it this is made with tomato puree, apple vegetable puree, butternut squash, spinach, vinegar, salt, onion powder, and allspice. Anthony said this tastes better than any regular like Heinz ketchup he's ever had. It's like bistro ketchup. So we are gonna buy this for him because it's a little bit cheaper than this. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the Alterna Sweets. I'll leave a link for it down below. Uh, plus Jared, the owner, is just like an awesome guy. So we're just gonna put a couple tablespoons of this in here. You can kind of do it to taste. I actually like to put a little bit more in. Me too. There you go. So this stuff here is, I believe, let's see, one net carb per serving, and a serving size is a tablespoon. So the idea here is all we're gonna do is get all of that cream cheese to melt down and mix it up, then we can move on to the next step. Okay, this is all done. Let's go ahead and put this into our pan. So here, if I lift this up, you wanna move that so we can put the pan underneath? Sure. Okay, and we'll go ahead and dump this in here. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so we'll put this off to the side and uh, we'll work on the meatloaf. Then we can work on the egg coverings for each of this and the taco pie. Next up, meatloaf. Okay, we got two pounds of our ground beef. That's our oven telling us it's preheated. To that, we're going to add all of these onions that we have left. This was about a half an onion, half an onion to three quarters of an onion. To this, we've got some hemp hearts, some garlic powder, some salt, black pepper, a little bit of thyme, and some soy sauce. Now you get to get your hands all dirty. You can't do this by spatula. Dang it. There you go. <laughs> well, at least I appreciate the gloves. You want to incorporate all of this. Now the biggest key to this, don't over mix the meat or you're gonna make it tough. All you wanna do is get everything mixed in. Okay, now that that's all done, we're gonna go into our pan. And this is a pan that we got uh, on QVC, of course. David Venable. It was David Venable. I think this was like the Rachel Ray uh, meatloaf pan. And this thing is awesome. Because you can just pull it right out. So it pulls done. it right out of the juices. Of course, we don't really want that. But what we do is we pull it out and then we pour the fats right back over. Go ahead and level that in. I'm coming out of my fingers here. Okay, so here's what I like to do with my meatloaf. I make a little valley in the middle. We can get this centered. Aww. Then I've got here, I've got some of the Alterna Sweets ketchup mm -hmm. that I've thinned down with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And we're gonna fill up that valley. Aww. And then come all across the top. It's like a little stream because when I was a kid, we ate a lot of meatloaf and my dad always put tomato sauce on top of the meatloaf. Wow. Always. So we're going to just use the Alterna Sweets. Sometimes I'll make this meatloaf and I'll stuff it with cheese. What you do is you cut that, you do that valley and then you get the baby bell cheeses, put them inside and then cover the top of the meat. And then every time you slice this, you get like a bite of baby bell cheese. It's kind of awesome. Okay, we're gonna put this into the oven, 350 degrees. How long do you think it'll take? Till it's done. Okay, now we're gonna work on the taco pie. We got a bowl here. I'm gonna start with this. I need a dozen eggs. Do you need me to help you with this? Yes, please. Because <laughs> I can do this fast. Just start cracking. Okay, it. so let's get this one in here. <laughs> Hold the bowl. I got the shell and everything. Hold the no, no, no. Are you, are you just gonna go right in like that? And I'm gonna Cooking this. with Rachel. Everybody says that's so easy. Rachel can make it. That's a joke, right? No, not really. <laughs> to the eggs, we're gonna add some garlic powder, some onion powder, some salt, some taco seasoning and then one cup of heavy whipping cream. Wow, that looks amazing. And then go ahead and just mix that up. Okay, I'm gonna take that off, put this in. We're going to take some cheese, about a cup or so. Cover up the taco meat. And pour the egg mixture over that. And then about another half a cup of cheese across the top. The eggs are as orange as the cheese is. 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes until it's set. If you're going to freeze it, just get the eggs to set, but don't let the cheese start browning. Next up, cheeseburger casserole topping. Put that off to the side. Same thing. This time we're using six eggs. Let's try not to get them like all over the counter. A half a cup of heavy whipping cream. You know what the problem with heavy whipping cream is? I feel like I'm leaving a bunch in the in the cup measure every time. All you have to do is make a cup of coffee and pour it down in there. Okay. 
That's my trick. Then we're going to go, this is how you give it to taste just like a McDonald's cheeseburger. Mustard. Couple of tablespoons of mustard. I actually really like that flavor. Okay, go ahead and mix that up. Okay, to that, while you're mixing that, we're going to add about a cup of cheese. Like my measurement, that's about a cup. I actually know. Just I, like a handful I, for me is about a cup, and I, I guarantee you measure it out in hands. Right. Are you right? Yeah. Okay. So we can take that off to the side. We're going to take this, go right over the top, try to evenly disperse that cheese as you pour it over. Do we eat pickles? Just try to mix up that cheese a little bit, though we're going to add more. Now we'll take about another half a cup of cheese, try to fill in the areas that you missed. Oh, you missed a spot. We're going to take that leftover bacon. Mm. And we'll cross the top like this. We're going to cover the whole thing in pickles. This is my favorite part because that was my favorite thing on a McDonald's cheeseburger was like the one little pickle that they would put. Now we're just using jarred pickles. You can use regular ones. Just when it comes to this recipe, it's just easier to buy these pre-sliced ones. We try to find some that don't have a lot of garbage in it. Usually the plastic ones are actually pretty good. Yeah. 350 degrees, about 30 minutes again until all of the egg mixture is completely set. Okay, last thing as Rachel puts on her gloves, we've got 24 ounces of ground beef left. Mm -hmm. So since this is 88% lean, they're not going to shrink as much. So we're going to make six quarter pound burgers. Uh, so to that, we're just going to add this a little bit of salt, some pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, and then this toasted onion. Which is crazy. From fresh chacks. Crazy good. We'll just go ahead and add all that in there. And again, let you mix that all really well. And again, don't over mix any, just incorporate all the spices. Okay, everything's all mixed up. So now we're gonna measure out our burgers. We're gonna measure out six four ounce burgers, and then we're gonna make the burgers with this little tool. We got this thing on Amazon. It's absolutely awesome and it's really cheap and you can stuff them yeah you can make stuff ones because it's got this little thing and i like the fact that it all comes apart so it cleans easily but then you can even take this apart and yeah put like little stamps to fill them up Blue with cheese stuff. so we need six four ounce burgers so while you're me measuring them out i'll start stuffing them okay so here's our burgers and uh if you don't want to pre-cook them what you can do is with that little press you also get these little paper circles so you can kind of stack them all and stick them in the freezer and then pull them out whenever you want just as well. like the ones that are like a sleeve yeah same thing but we're going to pre-cook them this way everybody can just kind of grab and go so we're going to cook them in the air fryer this way it's nice and clean we don't have splattering nice. grease anything like that so we'll cook these up Meal prep is done. We use seven and a half pounds of ground beef and take a look at this spread. I actually think we have a nice variety. We have a nice variety. It's not just browned up ground beef, though we really enjoy browned up ground beef, especially when you add some cream cheese to oh, it. Oh, absolutely. And if that's all you can meal prep, I mean, at least it gets you one step into the week. Right. So let's go over what we have. Oh, by the way, here's the best part. Including doing the filming, which obviously adds time, this meal prep took us about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, including the cooking time. And then it's just done and like all of the dishes and pots and pans done for the week. Right. So let's let's round it up. We spent two hours and that was having to film it. If we weren't having to film it. It would not be two hours. It would be closer to like an hour. Yeah. That includes the 30 minutes of cooking time for each because we basically had them all cooking at the same time. Mm -hmm. so here's what we got. We got a cheeseburger casserole here. Uh, I'm not going to go over the macros you'd have, because I've altered my recipe a little bit mm -hmm. for this, but about eight servings there. Each one's going to be somewhere around 500 calories. So you get a nice meal just in that. Taco pie mm. goes great. Put a little bit of guacamole on top, a little salsa. bit of sour cream, a little bit of salsa on top. Again, we doubled up the meat, left the heavy cream right where it's at. You got about eight servings there. Again, another 400 calories or so per slice. Really tasty. We got a meatloaf. We started with two pounds of ground beef. 
Meatloaf does not last in our house. No. That's four servings. You want to say it's eight. It's four servings. Each person's getting a half pound of ground beef. It's like eating a hamburger, but more delicious. Yes. And uh, then we've got six quarter pound burgers. You figure there's four to six meals there. Somebody's going to eat one. Somebody may eat two. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So here's the thing. All of this food, if you add in all of the extra ingredients, we spent $23 on the ground beef because we spent $19 and then we had a package of ground beef that we threw in that we paid like $3.50 for. Mm -hmm. So we used $24 in ground beef. If you add in all the other ingredients, the heavy cream, the cheese, the pickles, which really it wasn't a whole lot. No. Round it way up. We spent somewhere between $30 to $35 to make all of this. And you're done. So that's eight, eight. Four and six, even if you say four, that's 24 meals, right? Wow. That's about $1.35 per person for a main portion of their food. And again, like you said, we're done for the week. We don't have to cook. If the kids come and go like, what do you got? Go find something in the fridge or order out. But we're done cooking for the next five days. Exactly. And it's very tasty homemade tasting good food. Yeah. The only thing that we will, in addition to this, cook is maybe preparing a little bit of a salad, some broccoli. We use a lot of frozen vegetables or we buy fresh and we throw them in the steamer real quick. Yeah. I just don't want to pre-cook my vegetables. No. It, it takes two minutes or frying up an egg, something like that. But the main portion, the dinners, we're done. Yeah, and actually all of these things freeze really well. Everything freezes really well. So you've got the holidays coming. This is a great meal prep just for people that are coming for like Christmas, Thanksgiving, because they're not just there usually for the one day. You know, family comes in and you've got a week's worth of meals to make, just do this and you're done. Yep. Well, that is our video for today. Let us know down in the comment section if there's any other way that you would use a log of ground beef. Absolutely. So please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.